Justin, I guess, start of the year, Dockers Gold Coast in Adelaide at Norwood Oval probably wasn't a game a lot of people would have thought would have been a big sort of fixture, but looking at it now, it's, it's a big one in terms of the, the sort of the season and the way it could shape or define it for yourself. Yeah, well, it is. It's really important for us, and I'm sure they're looking at it the same way. Um, yeah, we need to we need to get rolling. We need to get our footy back somewhere near its best. So um, yeah, it's an important game for us. How much of, is the former concern because the contested ball has been an issue all year and yeah. a lack of a response? Are you concerned by that? Uh, no, I'm not. Well, I'm not not concerned by it in terms of yeah, what we oh, yeah. I, we need to improve on it. Like, there's no doubt, and that's forefront of our mind this this um, this week. We reviewed it heavily. Um, each player reviewed their own game in the contest heavily. Uh, yeah, and the amount of opportunities we we gave Adelaide off the back of not being able to you know pick the ball up. Some of it being uncontested ball as much as contested ball. So um, there's no doubt we need to be tougher. So is that is that a mindset thing, or what do you what do you put that down to? Well, I think there's a little bit of second guessing ourself, um, whether to go, whether not to go, and I think um, we're not as present as we need to be, and we're not um, we're not in the moment as enough as much as we need to be, and um, it's different for everyone. Sometimes we're trying to give the ball before we actually pick the ball up. Um, yeah, and we're worrying about what we need to do with it before we've actually got it in our hands. So we just need to make sure. Um, we live in the moment a little bit more, and that goes for, you know, our weeks and our whole game. Like we just need to be a bit more present and execute our next moment rather than focusing on, you know, the scoreboard or form or mistakes. We just we just need to move on. So we're focused on that pretty heavily this week. You said the players need to forget about last year. <clears throat> How do you feel about like taking that on board? Because be a major comment. Well, um, yeah, it's going to be different for everyone. That's you know, the, the beauty of coaching, like, you know, 44 guys on our list that all think differently, all have different concerns about where they, where they sit in the, their foot, with their football, with their lives. So, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully it um, just allows us to um, get rid of the burden of expectation and focus on what's important. And what's, in fo what's important is we focus on the present and what our ne next task is, um, whether that's during the week or on game day. Um, yeah, forget about what happened in the past and forget about what's happening in the future. Let's just make sure we, we're living in the moment and executing the next moment. Can it be hard to focus when you're away for nine days, you're in two different hotels, you're doing extra media, you're out doing clinics and there's a chance to maybe slip into not so much holiday mode, but you're away from that normal routine? Ah, oh, yeah, I get, get the point. And I think there's some merit in that. I think some change is good at the moment. And um, doing a few different things that allows the players to take their mind off footy um, is good for them. And uh, you know, the way the way they've been rocking up to um, the training aspect, I couldn't be more happy. And um, yeah, they seem to be really invested. So I think um, a bit of a change has, has been good, and hopefully, um, yeah, that pay di pays dividends on Friday. Have you seen them bonding? I guess that was another thing you were hoping for on this trip. <coughs> spending all that time together, have you know, yeah, it just forces forces the players to hang out a little bit more. Um, yeah, do things that they probably wouldn't normally do. You know, finish training and go home, versus you know, finish training and hang out together. So, yeah, that that stuff is um, and that yeah byproduct of just being in the same hotel. Speaking of changes, you you're looking like you'll make a few at least one force with Matt. But um, what about the, the former Will Brody last week at the Waffle and obviously two weeks back there? I think many thought it was a bit of a shock to see him back, but the last fortnight back there, how do you assess that? Uh, yeah, oh, it's, he's, he's had one game back there and um, yeah, played well. Stat sheet was really good. And we bought you know, a, a back in Wagner, a midfielder in Brody, and a forward in Sturt over. And we bought them over for a reason. They're, they're all a chance to come into the team in some you know, shape or another. And um, you know, it looks like Freddie has got, been given the all clear to, to come back into the team as well after that week off with his eye. So, um, yeah, there's some yeah, players that are ready to come back into the side, which is you know, always good. And, yeah, if things aren't working, you need to make some changes. So, um, yeah, we'll thrash that out. How many, how many unforced changes do you think you'd make just to give a clue at the stage? Uh, it'd be, yeah, one to three, I'd imagine. Yeah. We're not gonna, it's not going to be wholesale changes. But um, 
yeah, we need to reward those players that are playing well um, at Peel, and yeah, we'll look to do that. Um, four games in, not the end of the world, clearly not the start you, you'd have wanted, but how confident are you <coughs> that things can you know, click and get back onto where you, where you need them to be? Yeah, I'm really confident. I'm really confident that it can turn and can turn quick. But like I said to the players, it's not going to it's not going to turn on one person. It's going to turn. It's, we need everyone to to improve their footy. Um, and I think there's some things that we can get right within our footy and, and get a you know, um, big uplift in. Like uh, you know, we're getting the inside fifties. Um, clearly, we need to be able to score more often. And you know, we spoke about the contest before. We need we need to tidy that up. How sore is Luke Ryan? He's had the back issue pre-season and obviously sort of wrenched me, but he's set to play, as I understand. But yeah. how's he sort of going with that? Uh, he's right. Like, he's um, back cleared up pretty quick. Um, yeah, he's dealing with that little knee injury that he had on the weekend, but yeah, he's one of our toughest players. And um, he's played under a lot of pain in the past, and so, he'll, yeah, he'll be right to go. The defence, did they sort of feel it a bit last week? I think it was the highest score, 111, you know, 18 months. Did they sort of feel that they lowered their colours a bit? Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, we just probably went away from playing our way, clearly. And, um, yeah, we went a bit insular and went back to a bit more one-on-one -on -one back there than what we'd like. So, yeah, it's been a pretty solid week in terms of review and you know, the players have led a lot, a lot of that and taken ownership and, you know, the coaches understand where our ownership lies. So. Yeah, we're all in it together, and like I said, we, we all need to lift. It's not just on one line or one person, it's on it's on everyone. On Wagner and Sturth, do you think they can add a bit more pace to <coughs> your side? There's, there's been talk about the slow ball movement and that sort of thing, but Wagner's probably got those attributes that could really quicken things up and you know, yeah. takes the game on. Yeah, I understand the slow ball, ball movement side of things. Um, I think the thing that probably hasn't been um, voiced at all is the fact that we're number two for handballs in the comp. And you know they, they always when they show fast ball movement teams they always use a stat about handball meters gained and we're top four for that as well. So we are trying to take the game on. Um, yeah, our connection inside 50 has been poor and we haven't made the most of our fast play opportunities. So um, yeah, we need you know 18th for scoring efficiency going inside 50 on the back of you know third I think it is for total inside 50s in the comp. So clearly we need to get better at making more of our fast play opportunities. So. Yep, I think Wagner, I think Freddie, I think you know those guys with speed can can play a part. It's just um, yeah, how many we can get into the team. And Sturt's journey, it's been more than two years since he's played. What uh, I guess did he have to work on to try and get back into this position? Um, well, well, we've yeah, it's hard to like say those sort of things in public because you don't want to air dirty laundry or, or, or anything like that. But I we've just been pushing him to be. Um, making sure he's impacting on both sides of the ball and bringing really strong intensity to, and consistent intensity to a whole game. And been really happy with his pre-season. I think his game in pre-season against Port Adelaide was a massive step forward for him. And last week, um, in the last quarter when Peel needed something, he was able to you know, kick a couple of goals and lay a couple of tackles and win a couple of really strong contests. So um, he's really confident and. Um, yeah, deserve an op he deserves an opportunity, whether it's um, you know, this week or as a sub, or we'll, we'll just sort through that. Um, There's obviously a lot of inside 50s that you like. Do you think the midfield group, or when they look up into that forward line, they've got confidence in the targets that they're kicking to? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's never one thing. Like if, it's, if it was one thing in footy, it'd be easy to fix. Right? But it's a little bit on the forwards, um, providing really st stronger, op uh, yeah, better targets. Uh, and it's sometimes on the on the mids to take a little bit more time and um, you know take a take a running bounce if they've got grass in front of them and show the composure to be able to hit those targets. So um, you know, it, it, not every inside fifty looks the same. You know sometimes we've got an out number, sometimes the oppo's got an out number, sometimes it's high density, low density. It's yeah. So it's it's never one thing, but we can definitely provide better options for the ball carrier, and we can definitely take a bit more pride in our execution. You, um, you think they've got the confidence in them? Yeah. 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 A few days ago, we were asking Beveridge about Jamara. Yesterday, we were here asking Matthew about Isaac. You know, yesterday also, it's Nathan and Michael. How does it just get, do you just despair that it just keeps happening and happening? Oh, it's disgusting. Mm. Yeah, and it is a bit of a, it's, it's really sad that it keeps happening. And, um, 
yeah, you know, I think in this industry you sort of understand that you're going to cop criticism for form and what you dish up on the field, but you should never cop. Um, you should never cop what those players have copped for you know colour of their skin or, or race or, or anything like that. So it just it just needs to stop. Mm. Like, um, yeah, I'm not across how we can how we can stop it, but. Um, you know, social media companies need to take some ownership on this sort of stuff as well. It's just, it's not good enough. Our, uh, our Indigenous players shouldn't have to open up their phones and, mm. and, and read that. So, yeah, it just needs to stop. And how are Nathan and Michael? Uh, they're, in, they're in good spirits. Mm. And like, yeah, they're, they're disappointed that, they, uh, that this keeps happening to, to them and their brothers. And yeah, it's just, like I said, they shouldn't have to, shouldn't have to go through it. And then uh, they need to stop. They'll play. They'll play. Yep. They'll, they'll be right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Do you think there's been a rise in this kind of rhetoric in recent years, or do you think something that's always been there, but now that it's getting called out more publicly, even on social media, that we're becoming more aware? Uh, yeah. Probably not educated enough to to talk to the historic of it, but I think it's easier for people now to 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 voice these sort of yeah, things like there's, there's more avenues um, for them to be able to voice them, and more access to be able to um, get it to the players, which is yeah unfair. Do you how do you address that as a team? Do you, do you sit down with everyone, or like, how do you approach it? Yeah, yeah, I just mentioned it before our Oppo meeting yesterday, and um, yeah, yeah, Peter Bell had spoken to the players, and yeah, yeah so I spoke to the players individually, and then. Yeah, we, the, the players showed massive support for for Sonny and and Willow and put their arms around them and yeah, we've we got your back and like, it's something that we all need to take ownership of and and all need to um, call it out when we see it. It's, it's not the first time either that either of them have been dealing with this or have dealt with it. And unfortunately, it's probably not going to be the last. But the resilience of those two in particular, are you sort of in awe of that at some degree, or just to continue to push on in life? Yeah, well, they're both yeah, senior players and trailblazers and have set such a strong example for um, the younger Indigenous players within the game. So, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of what they've done. Um, yeah, it clearly doesn't make it right and they shouldn't have to deal with this, but um, yeah, I think as um, role models have set such a strong example for um, yeah, everyone in the community, so fully su support them calling it out and fully support, yeah, fully have their back in um, dealing with it. Speaking of backs, Matt Kavanagh, has he had that scan since he's been back in Perth? Uh, no, we haven't got an update on it yet. Um, we just, yeah, we've, we've got scans and we're just working through the best way to um, rehab it. So, haven't got any time frames yet, but we'll work through that in the next few days or, yeah, early next week. Is there cause for concern in terms of maybe a little longer than would have thought, or is it something like maybe a, a jab and hopefully a response? Yeah, it's a bit unpredictable. So we're hoping it's a jab and a response, as you put it. Um, but yeah, you never know how they, how they respond. So um, we'll just have to wait and see. How close was Fife to getting on the plane this week? It sounded like he was making good progress last week. Yeah, he was close. Yeah, so um, yeah, you haven't really got an update on him, like it's uh, week by week, we'll get back next week and see how he's progressing and, and work through a plan of getting him back in the team. Sounds like Waffle is a, a real option. Oh, well we haven't, yeah, don't want to be premature in, in saying that because, uh, yeah, there's a lot of different options that we can that we can um, look at to get him back in the AFL team and that's one of probably yeah, three or four or five. In terms of what he's able to do at the minute, what is he able to do and what, he, what can't he do? Well, he's, yeah, he's back running, so on 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 the turf. So he's done a lot of work on the alter G, and um, yeah, he's back he's back doing some lower level running. So, um, like I said earlier in the week, the the more you miss, the the more ground you have to make up. So we'll work through that later. How frustrated is Nat, given he obviously wants to be the best, and he so often is. Yeah, oh, well, it's of course like he's um, had such a strong pre season. Um, yeah, and to miss the early part of the year is frustrating for all of us, um, including him, obviously. And yeah, you know, he, he he still believes that he's got a you know strong body of work behind him, and he feels like the rest of his body that let him down last year is still in really good order. So if, if he can get over this little hump and get his 
foot fixed, he, he feels like he can have a prolonged crack at it. So, yeah, he's frustrated but optimistic. Some of your former Freo players have played the game plan and unwatchable. Do you have a response to that? Uh, I don't get caught up in that. Like, um, we're not playing our best footy. We, we understand that. We're trying to get better. And um, hopefully you see an improvement this week. Do you see that? Weather. Run with, oh, sorry, you guys. Is there weather of concern? No. Nah, no, nah, we'll prepare for any conditions. Do you see a run with Barol for James H again? Obviously, he did that on Laird last week. <coughs> yeah, we'll work through that. I think he's um, been able to yeah, quell the opposition's best mids. So we'll, we'll look at that. How is James feeling about uh, playing? Um, Miller and Anderson both going really well. How is James feeling about playing back at Northern? Yeah, he's excited. Yeah, he's got obviously a strong history. I was talking to him at breakfast about you know his his dad's career and his and his uncle's career and his own career. And I think he's the youngest ever Sanford player to play in a grand final. Is that you know that's true? Yeah, he's, he told me that. I don't know whether he's telling the truth or not. But <laughs> playing a um, yeah Sanford grand final at 16 years of age is um, no small feat, and playing two before you're drafted is a great effort. So um, yeah. He's, uh, he's excited to get back there. Have you have you coached or played on Nord Oval at all? You know, do you know the ground? At you all? played a pre-season game against yep. Port Adelaide there you know, a fair few years ago now. Um, so I've been there before and yeah, I understand the dimensions. It's pretty small. It's pretty small ground. Pretty skinny. Um, should promote a lot of contest. So um, yeah, we're looking forward to it. How do you feel? It's it's a, such a different ground to anything you get in the AFL these days. How do you feel? You know, sort of what it, what's it feel like going onto a real old-fashioned suburban ground again? Yeah, it's going to be good. No, it's going to be a good experience. Exciting. Um, you now I think there's, you know, it holds about twelve thousand. I think they're expecting ten thousand. Uh, those these smaller grounds can create a really good atmosphere. Um, yeah, so we're looking forward to get out there. And how nervous are you about that brick wall? Any contest <laughs> on, the, on the wing plays? You know, maybe. Ending up on the wall. I haven't really thought about that. The bigger issues on my mind this week. But yeah. I'll get out there tomorrow and have a bit of a captain's run and uh, have a look. The, the losing form, I understand, seems to be a little bit contagious, unfortunately, that your quiz night team you're on last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not one of my strengths. <laughs> quiz nights. Uh, that's a wrap, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Justin. Leave with nothing.